Hey everybody, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Mike McCutcheon. Today I'm going to show you a new product to develop fingerprints on different surfaces, but specifically on dark surfaces, um, and I, I think it's really going to work well. I'm going to show you this product called Skilluminate. I hope I'm saying that right. So I met my friends at a conference in Las Vegas about uh, fingerprint processing, and they showed me this new product, and I was blown away by it. So, first, uh, the samples come in these little bags. Now, I can tell you I have a few of them. And getting through the airport with little baggies of white powder with a logo on them might be a little more difficult than uh, I was expecting. But I'm here, and I am not under arrest, so things worked out okay. What we're going to do is this powder, when you develop it on the fingerprint, needs to be viewed under a light that is about, a UV light that is about 254 nanometers. Now I've told you before, I use a, um, a battle light that I can use a UV tip, but the UV light doesn't go that low. So I do have this small UV light here that I'm going to use to look at my fingerprints. So enough chit chat and you're saying, all right, well, what's the difference between a white powder and using the Skilluminate? I don't know. We're going to find out. So what I'm going to do is I haven't, I'm not going to try to make a big sebaceous print or anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to use a series of fingerprints. I'm going to go left from right. All right, so I have fingerprints on here. I'll even put a couple up here just in case those um, uh, didn't show up very well. So now I have my two different fingerprints on the black tile. I'm going to develop one using this, and then I'm going to use a, uh, a regular white powder to develop these, and then we'll see if there's a difference um, on how far the Skilluminate will be able to uh, highlight that fingerprint. Um, I'm just using a traditional white powder and a Lint PV brush. Now, normally when I use a dark color, I don't usually use white powder. I actually use gray. But to really show the contrast, I'm using a white powder today. So let's get going and see what we have. So the first thing I'm going to do is these brushes here that I got from my friends are actually already loaded with the powder. So here's the sample, like I said, but here's the powder. So this side here I'm going to develop using this. And you develop it the same way you would a uh, regular fingerprint. So I have my two fingers here, and I'm just spinning my brush, barely touching that. I'm just going to go back over. And you know what? I'll just do a couple more just in case. Perfect. I'm going to actually put that back in. Beautiful. Now I'm going to develop using the white powder. We're already making a mess. So I have a nice clean brush. I'm using a white powder. Now we know we only need a little bit of powder, a little, little bit of powder. Not too much. So I'm going to go ahead and Ahead and dust those. Mm, these aren't coming out very well. I keep adding more here, hoping that they're going to pop with the white powder, but we'll see what we can find. Okay. This came out like crap. I can see the first ones, but by the end, the white powder aren't, aren't coming out very well. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a, a quick break here. I'm going to grab my silver powder and see maybe if I can't develop these a little better with the silver powder. I don't know if these came out yet because I'm going to have to turn the lights off and we'll have to do a close-up with those. I'm using a UV light here. I told you it's 254 nanometers. The problem is, is I dropped it and I broke half of my bulb. So it's not going to be as powerful. What are you going to do? But I bet you this is still going to work really, really well 
and it'll give you an alternative to dusting on dark surfaces when you have that really light print. I'm gonna get the silver and I'm gonna see if I can make those pop. Did you miss me? I'm back. Here I am. So, I'm gonna use this silver powder. I really like this powder. One, because it looks amazing. Um, if you remember the, uh, the 64 box of Crayola crayons and you would want the gold and the silver, this looks like the silver crayon that you would get. It's not gray, it's a silver, and it really looks pretty. So I just did a training. Oh, well, I'm gonna use the same brush so I don't have to leave you again. And so we're kind of making a mess here. Well, this is, in my expert opinion, Oh, wait, I got one here. Oh, yeah, they're coming a little bit. I was going to say that they're kind of shitty. They're not looking great. They're really not. Um, I have a couple of here. So this would have been about seven or eight fingerprints in. I didn't do a sebaceous print, wipe my ears, wipe my forehead, or behind my neck to get a real oily print. I just did the prints as they are. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to use my UV light and I'm going to do a nice close-up of these for you so that you can see whether or not these prints developed better using a white powder or a silver powder or whether this product is really going to um, be something you should check out. So stand by. Let's check. Let's uh, dim the lights and let's take a look. Okay, here's our silver this is just the silver powder or the white powder and i'm going you can see that one print that's the first print but then as i did my series across i see a couple little smudges here but nothing amazing here's the second tile again you can see the first print is showing up I see a couple of outlines here, but nothing with any significant detail. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. That one I have some detail in. So uh, I would say out of all of those, I have three workable prints that I would be able to try to lift. That's using the white or the traditional powder. Wow, check this out. That is awesome. Look at this. All the way across. One, two, three. These are smudged, but you can see right in here. Can you see that? There are definitely some ridges here all the way over. I'm going to grab the, the second one, too. I bet you there's some here. Holy crap. Look at that. That is the ones that I did the second one where I said, oh, you know, I'll throw a couple extra on top. Pop, pop, pop. Those are all, every single one of them is visible. Oh my God, are you kidding me? I couldn't believe the difference that this powder made. This was absolutely amazing compared to using a regular powder. Now I have to say, I set this up. I didn't know whether or not, um, I didn't know whether or not it would be much better or not. I believed what my friends had told me about using this stuff. But my God, I, I can't believe the difference. Not to mention, I'm using a broken light and it still worked uh, amazing compared to using a white or a silver on a dark surface. Um, that's all I have. Um, it is Latent Forensic. Latent Forensic. They sell the this product. Um, I highly recommend it uh, just from the experiment that I did today. Really, really impressive. I'm definitely going to start using this and, and introducing it in my training because, boy, that was dramatically different. Not one or two prints different. That was five or six prints out. So if you would like to um, order this product, it is Latent Forensic, and it's latentforensics.com. Latentforensics.com. I'll put the link uh, in the video here. Latentforensics.com, and you can get yourself... Some of these little cocaine packs that work amazing to light up your fingerprints. That's all I have, friends. Check out 
all of my other videos on YouTube, on Facebook, ForensicEducation.net, and I will talk to you next time.